It's been a long time, hasn't it? It's been a long time since I've done cosplay in an actual costume that isn't just me wearing a wig and doing my makeup. There's a reason for that. You see, I have been doing one very specific cosplay project for the last three, almost four years. And which bitch from my entire cosplay collection has caused this issue? Poison Ivy. Did someone say Draco Malfoy? <laughs> yep, Poison Ivy has been the main drawback for my um, not doing more cosplay for the past three years. I had a burst of inspiration back in 2020 to do more cosplay because I was on TikTok. I am now no longer on TikTok. <laughs> so, my effort with cosplay has dropped dramatically. I don't put a lot of effort into my cosplays in these videos and it sucks because I fucking want to. I know how to sew. I want to do more cosplays that involve me sewing and actually hand making my cosplays. Which brings us to today's video. My name is Brooklyn, otherwise known as the Dramatic Otaku, and today we are sewing a Sailor Jupiter cosplay. <laughs> Why now? Why am I starting to do this now? Simple reason, um, Oz Comic Con for Melbourne is possibly starting soon, depending on how lockdown goes, because guess what? Haha, <laughs> I'm still in lockdown, which makes this process a lot more difficult. I have decided to make my own new Sailor Moon and Sailor Jupiter dresses. And I'm doing it all from scratch. Meaning I'm not cutting these up. And meaning that um, I'm doing this all by myself. Uh, fucking winging it. And that is what I've written on my little script here. So. I'm fucking winging it, picking and choosing what uh, elements from different tutorials I want. There is going to be slight variance between the two dresses uh, for the Sailor Moon one. For example, I'm going to try with the with the regular roll sleeves. However, there's something that I've seen in a specific tutorial video that I actually really liked that I'm going to try for Sailor Jupiter's sleeves, and you'll see that later in the video. So, first of all, I am getting a pattern. When I said I'm gonna fucking wing it, um, I didn't mean it on the bodysuit. <laughs> God no, am I not winging it on the bodysuit. However, because I am in lockdown, getting the supplies I need is going to be difficult. So I'm actually going to start on the accessories first. I have two accessories that I've already handmade. The first one being the tiara. Now I made this out of ribbon. I don't really fancy making a hard uh, foam tiara. Uh, mainly because the way I style my hair, because I do do natural hair for Sailor Jupiter, uh, I push my fringe right over my face to the fact, to the point where it covers this quite a bit. So I'm fine to leave this as it is and I can pin my hair around this very, very easily. So maybe if I get a wig in the future that is closer to Sailor Jupiter's hair colour, then maybe then I will make a foam tiara. However, to start, I'm just using my ribbon tiara. It is exactly the same as the chokers. There is velcro at the back. Uh, this is gold ribbon. It will be slightly off colour to the rest of the accessories that I'm going to have for Sailor Jupiter. However, it's going, it's just going to work fine. I'm making do with what I have. Uh, this is just a green gem, sorry, a sharpied green gem uh, that has specific 
uh, holes in it so that you can sew it or like uh, I guess chain it onto different things and so I made this and obviously the ribbon choker how to make a collar choker out of ribbon because I need one for Sailor Jupiter so measure your neck length in the ribbon you then want to cut this area here you now have your basic choker length then you get your velcro spot you take one of each side and then adhere them to the ends here and make sure to put one on the uh, shiny side and one on the not so shiny side then what you do is cut the velcro dots or strips to fit your length of ribbon and there you go a wearable sailor moon or any sort of ribbon choker <laughs> i've done this twice i've done this once with a sailor moon choker and once and then once again with a sailor jupiter choker this is probably easier to do as i was saying there probably is an easy way to do this um however this is the cheapest now the next thing that i'm also going to make is the gloves i am going to be making my own gloves by taking a Nice pair of elbow gloves, not these ones, I bought some off eBay. And we'll be adding the rolls to those. And the next thing uh, will be the first thing that I actually try and make, which will be the boob and butt bows. Now, uh, there are some tutorials online about how to make anime bows. I'll be taking these and I'll be making the boob and butt bows at the exact same time, uh, using whatever fabric I find out there. <laughs> and I will be calling them boob and butt bows. <laughs> Yep, so let's get on with the video, starting with the boob and butt bows. Hey, um, just for fully getting into it, in the description box below you'll find a link to a resource document with all of the listings to most, if not all, fabrics, materials and other items used, as well as a link to a playlist that contains a few, di a few DIY and cosplay building technique videos for specifically Sailor Moon related cosplay. I use them to help me create my cosplay, including a video explaining how to actually assemble one of the patterns that I purchased for this cosplay. They will also be in the iCard above. To begin is my testing phase for the bows and armbands specifically. I decided to trial with red fabric as I had more of that fabric. Uh, I also needed to trial whether or not I could do the bow making that I wanted from Georgia Costume Tutorial with iron-on interfacing instead of sew-in interfacing like the tutorial, the tutorial suggests. If you want to know how to substitute iron-on instead of sew-in, I've left, left the instructions in the document linked in the description down below. You will need to still watch Georgia Costumes' tutorial. All I'm doing is helping translate iron-on interfacing into that equation for you guys. In the end, I didn't go with the iron-on interfacing because I didn't like how it looked compared to what I imagined sewing interfacing to look like. Take your stuff off. Uh, we're going to actually start with the sleeves um, or my test sleeves. Just with a really cheap poly pop fabric just to see how it would look. So we're doing a regular straight stitch across the entire thing. So it's currently October 17th and uh, good news, um, Melbourne is actually opening up a lot sooner than, um, we all thought. Uh, does this mean that Comic-Con Melbourne will be in November? Still don't know that. Um, but I've spent all night going through all of, uh, the bows and, uh, the sleeves and how to sew them. Uh, I've found that I don't mind if the armbands are a cheap fabric uh, and that I can just stuff them. Problem is I've made the 
actual bands themselves just a smidge too big. Uh, I made them six inches when they should have really been around probably three, but they look pretty decent uh, thus far. Uh, the bow. Now I use iron-on interfacing for this uh, at my mum's suggestion because we have shit tons of it. Uh, however, it's not going good. <laughs> Um, so I think I need to get not only a better fabric, because this looks quite awful, but I think I do need to get the sew-in interfacing, though this is, I'll still use the iron-on interfacing for the collars for the two, so yeah. So now I just need to fix up the, um, what's it called? I need to fix up the measurements. And then I will have a solid start to the accessories portion. Okay, so it's now the next day, um, and I've just ordered all of my uh, fabrics that I needed online on Spotlight. I just, however, have to note uh, for all of this is that I don't know how some of this is going to feel or how some of this is going to work on my body because I had to order all of these fabrics online because I've been in lockdown. N usually, if I was going to create a cosplay, I would go in the store and feel the types of fabrics that I would want on me. Um, problem is with lockdown and being in Melbourne is I couldn't do that. So, uh, I first of all, gotten fabrics that I've just gotten from around the house. So for example, this is like a polyester sheet fabric that I'm going to use for the civilian shirt for Sailor Moon. Uh, this is a polyester sheet fabric that I'm going to use for the Sailor Moon dress uh, itself for everything. Uh, this fabric, I genuinely don't know what uh, type it is. Um, but I'm going to try and use that for the Sailor Jupiter dress. Uh, I don't know if I will, is the question, um, because I need to make sure that I have enough of it. And since I don't know what fabric it is, I may actually end up going and getting some more because we go out of lockdown in about a week. Um, however, I have ordered all these fabrics. Uh, I'm going to go pick them up tomorrow and then I'll be able to uh, work on them or work with them but I do have to note that I ordered these all online that's why uh, in this video and in the resource list linked down below that um, there is some not inconsistencies but suggestions for other fabrics to use uh, for your own pleasure um, for example the bow fabric originally with the tests that you just saw, I used poplin fabric, uh, especially for the armbands. Um, yet, I want to use a cotton fabric for the rest of it. Uh, I'm not going to duplicate <laughs> the pattern. So, you're going to have to buy the pattern if you want to go by exactly what I am doing here. But yes, so let's continue on to actually making the cosplay. Now, when purchasing items for my cosplay, which I had to buy online because I was mid-lockdown when I decided to get my ass in gear for this project, I looked at the suggested materials on the pattern for each item, as well as things suggested in the two cosplay videos that I watched, such as shoulder pads and sew-in interfacing over iron-on interfacing. There are, however, things that I did not buy that I really wanted to. You see, pre me leaving TikTok, I came across this account uh, called Lily Archer Creative, and they had a few videos uh, on tips for Sailor Moon cosplayers, and I loved them. I'll put two videos here on screen now. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Sailor Scout glove rolls. For this you are going to need half inch upholstery piping cut into the appropriate lengths for wherever on your arm you need this to sit. 
and you're going to need gloves. Um, I use pre-made ones, you can make your own. I'm just not great at making my own gloves, so I order them online. And then you're gonna need fabric, whatever color is appropriate for your Sailor Scout. I like to use satin for this. If you're using satin, cut on the bias, on the diagonal, not straight, it'll stretch better. And we're gonna sew it down into these channels. For half inch upholstery piping, I like to do one inch wide channels. I actually measure this out with a ruler because it's on the outside of the fabric, so marking it isn't the best idea. Um, and eventually you'll have something that you can pull into a circle like this. You'll need to hand sew it so it doesn't spring apart when you let go, but there you have it. I wanted to use the upholstery piping and horsehair braids so badly, but the size and type of the upholstery piping suggested was way too expensive for the budget that, that I initially had, and by the time I had money for it again, I'd completely forgotten about it. And the only place I could find the right stuff was on Amazon, which I notoriously hate, so not worth it. But if I had to make this cosplay again, I might actually use those. Then was the horsehair braid. There's a whole story with what went on with the Sailor Jupiter fabrics, but to put a long story short, both fabrics that I bought were structured enough that they didn't need the extra braid, and I was also deterred by the bad reviews on Spotlight. I would still like to try to use this technique though. Okay, so I've got all of my materials from almost all. I'm still waiting on the red cotton from uh, Spotlight. <laughs> But from what I have so far, um, I've got the cotton lycra for the two bodysuits. This is probably the most perfect fabric that I could have for these bodysuits. Um, it's perfect. <laughs> Next we have the uh, pink cotton fabrics. I kind of hate it. <laughs> um, and this, that's the problem with not being able to actually go into the store is I was not able to feel this fabric before buying it. Um, it does not feel good, <laughs> especially for what I'm using it for. Uh, hopefully it does work and it's beneficial because I'm not using it for the armbands unlike with the Sailor Moon one with the red fabric. That one's going to be really annoying. <laughs> um, but for the bows, I've got the medium weight sewn interfacing and I've got the heavy sewn interfacing I think I'm gonna go with the medium interfacing so yeah okay so it is currently November 6th and the new dates for Comic-Con Melbourne have been released and they are going to be in December now I am probably only going to be end up going to one day meaning that I'll only get to use my Sailor Jupiter cosplay I'm okay with that <laughs> Mainly because I don't have anyone to go with me. Yay! <laughs> but that doesn't matter. I will still go on. Also, I'm poor, so one day is perfectly fine for me. <laughs> but as of November 6th, I have one um, of my test rolls done. I need to hand sew this together. And um, something else important about today are... I finished my exams, meaning that I can now throw myself into doing this cosplay. And um, I have a majority of my fabrics, but I will need to go and get a new green for the skirt for Sailor Jupiter, which is fine because I can just work on the Sailor Moon dress instead. But other than that, today we'll be cutting the fabric. Oh my god, am I scared. <laughs> so, let's cut the fabric. Here's where we get into the skirt for Sailor Jupiter. Yep, after being released from lockdown and several days prior to being double vaxxed, I got to be free and go into the world and finally go to Spotlight. All I knew was I had a plan, a colour set in my mind, my list of binding tape, hook and loop tape because I didn't want snaps, a scrap of pink fabric in my hand having had begun the bows at this point, and I vowed that I would not walk out of spotlight with my mortal enemy, the dreaded poplin fabric. 
or as my textiles teacher called it, Polypop. I walked out of Spotlight with six meters of apple green Polypop fabric. I also walked out with snaps over fucking Velcro, which is hook and loop tape. Because if, if the bodysuit is sitting in my nether regions, I don't want to attach I don't want to accidentally attach to a seat and reveal my underwear to everyone. So snaps it was. The six meters of fabric would account for two layers of skirt, as well as the collar, and it was the most perfect shade of green for this cosplay. And I have made a total of one bow. It's a very good looking one, but um, I uh, unfortunately had a bit of a hissy fit at the sewing machine. So I only have one. And it's a red one, not a pink one like I need. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so let's get on with the pink bows. And then I broke both sewing machines. So the sewing machine broke <laughs> by no fault of anyone except for the fact that we have a 30 plus year old sewing machine that is in desperate need of a service. Um, so I have to use the overlocker for everything else but luckily for me uh, we were testing the um, broken sewing machine on the bows, uh, the body bows, uh, I've got like this pinned ready for sewing. This one was already done, so I'm just using this as a reference. So it goes over here. Um, and then I've got the last two pieces. This is the one that we were testing on and we tested on it so much that, you know, it actually got sewed. <laughs> so miraculously, I do actually have uh, bows now that I have to hand sew. Um, the rest of my cosplay... <sighs> so, luckily for me, um, mum had wanted to buy a new sewing machine anyway, so we're getting that soon. Um, hopefully before Comic-Con. But I do also have a uh, overlocker, which will be incredibly helpful for like sewing the actual bodysuit because that's what I was going to use to sew the bodysuit anyway. I just need to re-thread it because I kind of jammed it, but it's fine. The main thing I need the sewing machine that isn't the overlocker for is for the skirt, uh, for pleats. Um, just because I think it would be better for me to actually straight stitch instead of overlock. I will overlock it for like the hem, but just having that straight stitch down so I don't, you know, overlock, cut part of the fabric, um, and then realize I've fucked up. Don't want that. Uh, with the bodysuits, don't really care, but I'm using two different types of fabric for the two skirts. So it's better if I have an actual sewing machine that can straight stitch. Otherwise, I will be hand stitching that bitch. <laughs> Which will not be fun, but I will do it. <laughs> so, yeah, time to hand stitch these bitches. To be fair, both of them are 30 plus years old. 
They were my grandma and my nana's machines, respectively, and the spare, regular sewing machine that we had was also my grandma's and was in roughly the same condition. So my mum bought a new one and holy shit. I feel like Aaron Yeager when he was able to balance on the fucking broken maneuver gear in season one of AOT. The machine was fucking fantastic and it made me realize how well I actually did on the old machine. I mean, I managed to get all of the bows and all of the armbands and half a bodysuit done with the in desperate need of a service overlocker and sewing machine combo. That was my errand moment. Let me have it, or before you know it, season four will roll around. Two sewing machines that severely need service. My um, overlocker. It's kind of broken. <laughs> It's not as broken as the actual sewing machine, but it's broken. Meaning I am extremely nervous to do the body suits on that overlocker, which is what I had planned to do. So I'm nervous. I'm also nervous for the fact that I rewatched the tutorial video for the actual um, pattern that was that I bought. Um, and, uh, the sailor collar, I forgot about seam allowance on, at least for the sailor moon one I did, so, hoping I can somehow pull that off. <laughs> okay, so it has been two-ish weeks and it's been about two weeks have a new sewing machine and today we're working on the bodysuit I already have one of the two bodysuits partially constructed I still need to do hemming around the uh, what is this called? armhole around the leg and to make this longer because I cut it too short apparently or it just doesn't fit around me but so far this is the most complete one but we need to build the second one and then I'll choose out of those two which one I want to be the Sailor Jupiter one Trouble time is next week when sewing the bodysuits I'd do the Sailor Moon one first and the Sailor Jupiter one second trial and error if you will a second reason as to why I'm doing two cosplays at once in the first place. And this came in handy around the hips and the legs. And when I was supposed to join the bodysuit with the snaps. For this portion of the bodysuit, I did three things wrong. One, I made both of the ends of the bodysuit too short. Two, I didn't add seam allowance. It's here that I should mention that the pattern doesn't really involve seam allowance like I thought it did when cutting the fabric. Only realizing when I had cut the final pieces of the top and back of both bodysuits. So, and three, the ass portion had a fatter end than the section reaching down to it. Now, how did I fix these problems? Well, one, for number one, I sewed an excess of fabric to the front portion of the bodysuit. What I should have done, sewn two excess portions to the fabric of the bodysuit, one for the front, one for the back. Due to me only adding to the front, it meant me having to reach all the way back to my ass and button up the bodysuit. It doesn't look like that, but it really does. <laughs> now for number two, this was actually a really simple fix. I had to sew elastic onto the bodysuit either way, so I sewed the elastic and over that did a bias binding, meaning I added an extra layer of fabric over the raw edge of the elastic. It actually looks fantastic on the bodysuit itself. Three, now that wasn't as much of an issue until I added snaps. So. This is the first pass of the bodysuit. This is gonna be the Sailor Moon bodysuit as the 
more perfected one is going to be the Sailor Jupiter one. Now I haven't touched on the sleeves yet, that's a problem for another day, but I have worked out how to do all of this here, which is good, and I've figured out how to do the snap clips at the bottom. It feels fine, my only problem is it's very thin, which will be good on a hot day, and I don't know how hot it's going to be on con day, but it is also a problem because I have very few sets of what's it called clothing, nude clothing. So a little bit of a problem, but nothing that can't be fixed. Because <laughs> I am wearing a skirt on that day. I'm wearing the sail skirt that I'm going to be attaching to this on that day. And I might just wear shorts underneath as well. Uh, just in case something happens. I might have to buy green shorts though and not wear these. That could be a valid reason to go to the <laughs> Snaps include two layers of fabric and one layer of interfacing between the two parts of the snaps. Otherwise, when you pull apart the connectors on Conde, bye bye crotch of cosplay. On the packaging of the snaps, on the packaging of the snaps, it gives you instructions to how to do them. Follow it. The first part, the first bodysuit, the Sailor Moon bodysuit, I didn't and it immediately started ripping apart. Second one, I did, and it's solid. It's still solid after Conde. The issue with the width uh, came about because of the lack of seam allowance on the, half of, on the back half of the bodysuit. The back had it, the front didn't. It's only, for, it's only a cosmetic difficulty, but you'll have a skirt covering it, you'll be fine. Also with the snaps, if this is your first time buying them, get two packs. I only bought one and it had a set of six snaps total. I broke two, used one as a tester and already had put two onto a bodysuit. So when I had only one snap on the good bodysuit a week before con, I panicked. Luckily for me, my mum hoards art supplies and we had plenty of extra snaps. Okay, so it is the Monday of the week of ComCon and um, I have finally gotten back onto the collar. I've been doing assignment work all day, but uh, I've gone on from that. Um, <clears throat> I've also, as I mentioned, gotten a new sewing machine, which I'm very excited for. Uh, tonight, with the exception of finally putting the ribbon onto the collar, like this, um, I will actually be able to do pin the actual collar to the bodysuit. Now I won't finish, I won't actually put it on the bodysuit until I've like done all of the sleeves and even then I might actually use uh, velcro loops. I Velcro loops? Velcro spots to keep this connected to that. Um, and the reason being is because I'm actually going to sew the bow to this, like the boob bow to this, and I'm going to sew the butt bow to the skirt. So that's what's going to be happening. I also need to figure out the roll that goes along her waist, but for now we're going to be following along with this. I'm um, going to be pinning the ribbon onto it, uh, sewing it with twin needles, and yeah, I think the back is going to be like that. It's not going to be quite like that, but it's going to be this thinner ribbon and then this slightly thicker ribbon is going to be on the back because it's the back of the actual thing. And I'm going to try and hide some of the like more unseemly bits with the ribbon. For the ribbon, I used a twin needle in the sewing machine. You don't need to. I did initially because I'm a dumbass and figured it would be the width of my ribbon and I wouldn't need to sew it twice. I was wrong, but 
I proceeded on anyway and the thing genuinely looked good with a straight stitch with the twin needles and it looks better than if I had done it with one. later in the day and I have obviously had a shower um, now I said earlier that I was just gonna do like this for the day and that was it first of all I figured that I have to actually sew the ends to the bow to make it actually fit um, without the back of the collar coming up to my ears as in it will crawl all the way up my neck so I need to sew the actual thing to the bow but I'm not gonna do that that is genuinely the last thing that I'm gonna do that is because oh god there's a cat out there so I lied when I said I was gonna do this last the actual sewing of the bow is gonna be last because it's gonna be hand sewed and then I'm going to hand sew part of the collar to the actual bodysuit itself. If not the collar to the bodysuit, then I'm going to safety pin the collar to the bodysuit. Right now, the bow and the collar have been pinned together, but not to the bodysuit. But I don't know if me walking around is gonna cause the bow to fall down, so yeah. What I'm going to be doing for the things here is these are shoulder pads and I'm going to be using this uh, hack from this DIY channel. So I'm going to be sewing over this, uh, what are these called? Shoulder pads. I'm going to be stitching these shoulder pads, first of all, I'm going to be covering them in this uh, and just sewing around the edges with it. I'm then going to be sewing across like that. Tomorrow, I'm going to be hemming all of the armbands uh, for both things. Going to be doing stitches across here for the shoulder pads and then pinning and sewing these to the armholes. Hopefully this works out. Never mind. <laughs> These, first of all, I should have done them widthways instead of lengthways. Uh, they look good in theory, not practically. Uh, when I put them on here, they looked good on the doll, not when I wore them. So, Realistically, I kind of want to keep these as they are, but I do want to have the like arm rolls So I'm going to just sew pieces of fabric to this and um, Hopefully it looks good And make sure as you're putting together the full thing to test it on yourself as well as how it looks on your dressmaking doll That's if you have one It'll really help for the new sleeves, I did the exact same process as I did with the armbands on the gloves. With the exception of the ends being curved, like with how you would usually sew sleeves on. 
and I fucked it up. So I had to redo them bigger. Remember, always go bigger if you can. You can always cut fabric off later, which is what I did. made this is really nice especially with the collar and the bow I do need to sew the collar and the bow on by hand meaning I might have to do it with it on me <laughs> or at least I pin it while I'm on me take it all off and etc etc but so far this is fantastic this is like one of the best things that I've ever made the sleeves bit of a problem at the start slowly got through it I think this is the best the sleeves can be, unless I did like bias hem around the actual sleeves themselves. But honestly, I like these the way they are. They look really good with the collar on. So yeah. On to the skirt, which I can fuck up one of the layers, because it would just be the underlayer then. So seeing as it would just cost me more time, and seeing as how much like progress I've done on the good bodysuit and how the bodysuit is essentially finished already um, and the last thing I need to do for the bodysuit is the rolls which I can make separately um, I think I'm going to be discontinuing the Sailor Moon one though this pattern is originally a Sailor Moon pattern and was meant for Sailor Moon but it could be just used for all the Sailor Scouts um, because Everything else I've sort of got a backup for. Uh, I am probably just going to focus on the Sailor Jupiter cosplay, seeing as I have like five days until Comic Con. Uh, so, plus I don't really feel like cosplaying Sailor Moon until I have a blonde wig. So, uh, Sailor Moon cosplay is going on hold, but I've got the framework down and I just really need to do sleeves and skirt and all that crap for this. I think I'm also going to put on hold the Sailor Moon, like, Usagi Tsukino uh, cosplay, like the detransformed version of the Sailor Moon, uh, simply for the fact that I may be burnt out after this week, who knows. So. This one's going on pause because I've essentially finished and we're just going to be focusing on Sailor Jupiter now. So let's move on to the skirt. So I made my test skirt um, off camera completely because I need to check how to do pleats and all that and how to do the waistband. Safe to say, I think I need an elastic band with the skirt because it sits fine but... I have big thighs, um, and I may need to cut this off my own body. <laughs> and after a day's worth of walking around a con, being extremely sweaty, I will need to cut it off my body. So, yeah. Good to know, though, that um, I can... Uh, Put it on, it's fine, and it's the right length and all that shit. Ah! And as for redoing the skirt, on camera this time, I sewed the front piece and back piece together, then as I was pleating the skirt, I was pinning and stretching the elastic, then sewing it all together with a zigzag stitch. After attaching the waistband, I assessed it and sadly, I couldn't cover the elastic zigzag stitch across the top of the skirt. This was due to the fact that I didn't want to... This was due to the fact that I didn't want the really restrictive, even with the buttons, decor waistband to cut into the elastic band, so that I could actually fit into the skirt. I also wanted the skirt to be as long as possible without the extra layer that I'd inevit inevitably be adding for the hem. Sacrificing style for comfort in this context, I guess. Watch me wrap up to come like this instead. Okay, so this 
fits far better than this. I literally have to cut myself out of this one. Um, so, I first of all need to fix the fucking front on this. That's the problem with both of them. The front is broken because I didn't hem it properly, but I'll hand stitch that. I'm going to cut up this dress. Uh, ooh. Oh, I really went for it. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I'm going to cut up the bottom of this dress, put it on the bottom of this, and stitch it around and use that as the hem. So, yeah. Now is for Sailor Jupiter's hair bubbles in the elastic in her hair. Now I sewed together uh, a piece of ribbon and put it around a hair tie, beading a large green bead and a small green bead to a hair tie. Because I only had one of the big green beads and I had many of the small green beads. But in the end it actually ended up working, giving sort of a sense of depth to... A very simple hair accessory I guess but with that now everything's done let's build this cosplay to begin is what's going under the cosplay because because of the type of fabric that I've bought that being cotton lycra there is a bit of sheerness through the bodysuit thus I wear nude underwear and for those who may have body issues with skin tight or close contact clothing, like myself, nude shapewear. There are two types here, but seeing as Comic Con Melbourne takes place on a heat wave of a weekend, I will choose the smaller pair. Next on is the bodysuit itself. No! <laughs> <laughs> followed by the waist roll and skirt the bow and the collars go on next that is if you haven't attached and hand stitched the collar to the body suit like myself but the butt bow does go next being attached at the back of the bodysuit with two safety pins from there is the boots I'm personally going to be wearing my Doc Martens for this con. I'm bringing in the extra pair of shoes just in case, but these are thematic and comfortable enough for the con and I have some pretty cute Sailor Moon socks to add to them. Next is headwear. I made this headpiece a while ago and don't have access to any stiffer materials to actually make props out of, but I wasn't really going to change it up anyway. Next is Luna and Artemis earrings and a little bit of eye makeup. And my Sailor Jupiter eyeliner pen, which I will be using as a prop. And last of all is gloves, which will be and was a fucking pain throughout the day. And I may just take them off for the arm rolls during the day. Which I did. And with that, my cosplay is done. I will be sharing some pictures and stuff like that uh, later because I'm I need to do some assignment stuff. But uh, just a note on the waist roll, I did it almost exactly the same as I did like the sleeves or the glove rolls <laughs> or whatever I didn't include stuffing into it and I just sewed it as one piece that I could put over the waistline here uh just because it's a little bit unkept 
and she does have a waist roll so it's just an extra piece of fabric that I can put on to my uh, cosplay over the skirt and out of all of this I'm going to be hand stitching uh, this and this uh, together and I'll be stitching the collar to the collar of the dress and the only thing that will be actually physically removable with exception to like the accessories will be this bow which I'll put two safety pins on the back and just attach to the back like that. Uh, I'll probably get my boyfriend to do that so yeah time for con. I didn't want to focus too much on making a vlog, so this is the only footage that I got from Condé, and it is me uh, at the Cosmo Parade. It's muted because there was very copyrighted music in the background, and I headed the parade. Woo! Well, it's after Comic Con. Um, fucking awesome. Uh, uh, in terms of the cosplay itself, because that's what this video is about, everything worked. Everything worked really, really fucking well. I looked fantastic. Photos here, I looked fantastic. I got professional photos done. I'm apparently going to be the only fucking Sailor Scout uh, in the group photos section on, like, the Comic-Con website, which... Don't know how to feel about that. Um... Because, you know, I went to a meetup, I was the only scout there. It's fun. <laughs> but, in terms of the actual cosplay itself, I'm going to say this once, and I'm going to say this only once. Don't fucking use Polly Pop fabric at all. Oh my fucking god, the skirt was such jack shit. Like, if I had to redo this cosplay, the only thing I would redo is make this skirt out of a semi-stretch fabric or make it out of, no just make it out of a semi-stretch fabric that's it I'm just making it out of a semi-stretch fabric fabric because a half the time I couldn't get the skirt over my ass which was fun and as you know I had to remake the skirt so that it would fit over my ass and then even had to include an elastic so it would fit over me um and then, and this was the fun part, we hadn't even gotten into con. So we'd, we'd gotten our wristbands, we'd gotten uh, into the hall, but it was about an hour, it was an hour or half an hour before? Hour before con. Three tears on my fucking skirt already. And it's at the hem, um, which was really frustrating because I had hemmed that really well, and by the end of con, I think I have another tear on my skirt. One tear that I had to fix up during the middle of the day, closer to the start of the day. Uh, second one I had to fix up. Uh, that's a new tear that I haven't seen yet, which is just fantastic. And you can see on this side that, what's it called? It's, 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 oh, it's frustrating. It's just extremely frustrating third tear that I had to fix up. It's genuinely really frustrating and they're all sections that had actual like fabric next to it. So never ever ever using this fabric for a skirt ever again or at least one for hemming and if I do it again I'm doing it in uh, fucking zigzag stitch like I did with this. Um... Everything else in my cosplay, even my shoes, I would wear again. And those are Doc Martens that have been half broken in. And I say half because four or five hours I wore those. And about, well, actually it's closer to eight hours for the entire day, but I wore them in total for about seven of those hours-ish. Six of them? Yeah, good majority. Yeah, so majority of the day I was wearing those Doc Martens and I have blisters on my feet and my heels hurt. Feet just do not want to move in shoes again for another two months. For those to have been hurting my feet and the backup shoes I had to be also hurting my feet, 
um, cause they rubbed in the exact area that was hurting. I would wear those again with that fucking cosplay. I would not wear this skirt again. Just, it is predominantly the fabric's fault. It's not stretch, it's just not all flattering. I only bought it because it was the perfect shade of green. I would give up on that perfect shade of green aesthetic so I could fucking have confidence have confidence and comfort in this fucking outfit. The rest of it's fine. The bodysuit is fucking fantastic. I love the bodysuit so much and the collar and the bow work really well. Uh, the second bow that I had to be attached, it did fall off partway through the day, but that's because I leant back on it. So I can't really lean back fully in this cosplay, but I can't really do that anyway because the bow is there. So, Everything else, even the bloody, uh, last minute, like, waist loop, what is it, what is it, waistband, whatever, that worked completely fine. That helped hide parts of the skirt. I would not wear the skirt again. <laughs> but yes, that has been my video for today. The cosplay actually turned out really well. I may one day finish my Sailor Moon outfits but from this experience with the polypop fabric I may have to change the actual fabric to uh the same sort of cotton drill fabric that I used for the bows uh for the Sailor Moon one so my Sailor Moon one is on hold you may see that in the future but not now so thank you guys so much for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope this helped you on your journey to making your own Sailor Moon, Sailor Jupiter, Sailor Soldier kind of cosplay. Uh, links to all the stuff that I've used will be in the description down below in a Google Doc and uh, on Google Drive. There is going to be a link to the Etsy page where I got the actual pattern uh, in the description as well. And I will see you guys next week. I upload every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. It's not Australian Standard. Apparently we work on Australian Daylight and not Standard. <laughs> I didn't know that. I've been saying in all of my outros, Australian Eastern Standard Time. No, that's Queensland. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, when you go to select, it's like... Sydney and Melbourne is on the same, and then Brisbane is an hour behind, which is weird because you think Brisbane would be before us. Earth is weird, but it is, it is. So, yes, Australian Eastern Daylight Time, and I hope you guys, I hope to see you guys then. Bye. Wait, don't go. Hi, it's me editing Brooklyn here. I've just finished editing the video, but felt like I needed to add this. So those photos that you saw, the professional ones that are right here now, are those aren't the only photos that were taken of me. I took some myself. And if you wanted to see those, maybe go over to my Instagram, Brookie is Dreaming. Don't ask about the name. Also, don't call me Brookie. I don't actually like that nickname. <laughs> But that's not the only of my social media that I really want to plug right now. Um, I also have a Discord server. It has been recently rejuvenated and desperately needs members. <laughs> so if you could consider um, maybe joining that, it is linked down below in my link tree. Um, I also have a Ko-Fi or Coffee or however you pronounce it. Um, and if you really want to see more videos like this where I... I'm going through the process of making a cosplay. It's not really a tutorial, but it's also not really not a tutorial. Um, then supporting me on Ko-Fi would be so helpful. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, consider subscribing, maybe. That would be much appreciated as well. Um, and if you have watched this far into the video, thank you so much. Watching me is support enough, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. See ya!